Last year, I took four big responsibilities as a university student. I was a chairperson of a large event, an assistant coordinator for two different practicums, and work on my final projects, all of them in the same semester. Meanwhile, I still have to study for my exams, and most of the subjects that I do were difficult, and I thought the regular study method definitely won't work. I need to find a different study method to learn this faster. After several trials and errors, I finally developed four study tips that significantly reduce my study time, especially for these subjects, and I'm going to share them with you in this video. I'm also sharing my practical and doable study routine for difficult subjects that cut my study time from 6 hours to only 3 hours in total. So watch until the end of the video if you want a 3 hour bonus free time. Okay, the first tip of all is to study with books only. All of my friends always study with laptops and the phones on. I used to be like that too until I realized the time that I had been distracted by the internet was too much making my study session takes twice the time it should be. Before you study, remove all gadgets like laptops, phones, tablets, and also your smartwatch from your desk. Print out all the materials that you need to study, such as slides, notes, practice sheets, and don't forget the answer keys. If you don't have the textbooks in its physical form, then you can borrow it from a library or from your seniors. When you study, also take notes, summarize, or practice questions in a notebook or scribble paper. The key to study faster is a long focus and no distractions. Studying with paper-based material will help you focus deeply on your study because first, there will be no distractions at all and second, paper-based material doesn't hurt your eyes for long-term use. Tired eyes will make us lose focus and studying longer and more painful. Also, this can resist our urge to search everything up in Google every 5 minutes because trust me, actually everything is already in the book, we're just too lazy to read it carefully. However, if you must search something up in Google, then write it down first on your note, then check it after you finish your study session. The second tip is to put a duration for your study session. Before you start the study session, decide on what you are going to do and the duration of each activity. We have to stop giving ourselves abundant time because if there is no time to waste, then we won't waste any time. I used to take 6 hours to study because hard subjects indeed need longer time to master. But instead of getting all the information in my head, I ended up taking the whole 2 hours just to read 3 subchapters. Because every time I finish the subchapters, I scroll for 15 minutes knowing that I have plenty of time. This is how I changed my study method from 6 hours long to only 3 hours in total. I usually divide my study session into two parts. First, I understand the concept, and second, I practice the questions. This method isn't ideal for cramming everything up before an exam I know, but it is highly effective for long time learning. For the first study section, I start by reading the title of the chapter, followed by the objectives or the introductions to understand what I'm about to learn. I highlight key terms from the introduction and keep them in a separate note. For example, if we look in the introduction of the first chapter of this biological process engineering book, we can find the chapter's objectives. In this chapter, we are going to learn transport process in the form of heat, mass, and momentum transfer. These three are similar and can be conceptualized in different terms. There are two variables building every transport process and first, we need to master the unit conversions too. This step is crucial because it keeps me focused on the chapter's main points. Afterward, I skim the subchapters and their introductions to create a mind map in my head of how the chapter's topics are interconnected. For example, if we continue the previous book, we can see that the first two subchapters are talking about effort and flow variables, which mentioned before in the introduction. In 1.4, we will learn about the relationships between the flow and effort variables. Turns out there are four relations, which are power, resistance, capacity, and inertia, and so on. You can jot down this mind map if the chapter seems too complex. During this stage, I skip all questions, tables, and graphs because they aren't essential yet. 
I allocate 1 hour for this part to get a complete overview of the chapter and a solid grasp of its objectives. Once that's done, I move on to the second section, which is practice. Each subchapter usually contains example questions. I start by redoing these examples because they come with correct answers and explanations. As I go through them, I mark every equations, tables, and graphs that are referenced because they are likely to appear in the future practice questions. The goal is to familiarize ourselves with different types of questions, how to answer them correctly, and where to find the key resources. I usually stop after doing the example questions and save the practice questions for another day, but if you are feeling up for it, then go ahead and continue. Personally, I can only focus for around 3 hours in total, so I have to prioritize the most important things to study. For the second part of my study session, I typically allocate 2 hours. In total, I spend about 3 hours on the chapter, and by the end, I've covered both the concepts and the key questions. The third tip is to use your time in classes effectively. In order to study less outside the class, you need to pay attention in the class. I know some students who attend a class but do another class assignments in the class, so they have to do this class assignment in another class and so on and lead it to a never-ending cycle of falling behind. This is the biggest daily cycle that a student could fall into. I'm going to share some tips to stay focused on long classes in the next video so if I were you, I would totally subscribe so I won't miss it. Okay, the last tip is do not study with your friends. Hear me up first. I have compared the efficiency of studying alone or with friends. Studying with friends is best for discussions and brainstormings, but not ideal for studying and understanding a material fast. It is mainly because even though studying with friends is more enjoyable and less intimidating, there will always be unnecessary chit chats taking your time up. So if you still want to discuss some materials with your friends, it would be better to study them alone first until you understand and then discuss it with your friends afterwards. Based on my personal experience, that way is more effective. Unless maybe you and your friends are studying in the same place but minding your own business, then I think it's still okay. But I still recommend you to study alone first. So, are there any tips for typical subjects that you guys found super helpful? Let me know in the comment section. If you like this video, then don't forget to click the like button and share it with your friends. I still have numerous of study methods that I want to share with you, so stay tuned for each video. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye bye!